listening to PetLifeRadio.com. Hello and welcome to Six Figure Dog Business. I'm your host, Ty Brown of SixFigureDogBusiness.com. Now, this is the show where we teach you how to start or grow your pet-related business to a healthy six-figure per year or more profit. Now, we're going a little bit outside of the dog world today to a degree, but I think you're going to find that her information can drive revenue in your business in a very unique way. So stay right with us as we come back with Melissa Casera. Sit. Stay. We'll be right back after a short pause. Every pet is unique. Maybe they're gray in the muzzle, yet young at heart. Maybe they're growing out of the puppy stage and into their paws and ears. Or maybe they're just trying to maintain a more girlish figure. At PetSmart... We have the right food for your pet at a great value for you. PetSmart. Be better together. Go to PetSmartDeal.com and save up to 30% on awesome gifts for the pets and pet people in your life. Toys, collars, leashes, PetSmart gift cards, treats, and more. Go to PetSmartDeal.com today. P-E-T-S-M-A-R-T-D-E-A-L.com. Let's Talk Pets on PetLifeRadio.com. Okay, we're back, and with us today we have PR expert Melissa Casera. So first off, Melissa, let me uh, give you a big welcome. Thanks for being on the show today. Oh, thank you for having me. And so when I introduced you, I said we're going outside of the dog world a little bit to a degree, but in a sense that's not true. You're actually married to a dog trainer, right? I am, yes. So I'm hoping what you're going to share with us today can work for dog trainers, pet sitters, dog walkers, veterinarians. It's going to work for all of us pet people, right? Absolutely. I have a lot of experience working with pet industry professionals as well, so it will awesome. all apply. Well, can uh, let's start off with you then. Who are you? What do you do? Where's your expertise? Tell us about Melissa. Sure. So basically, okay. I'm a PR expert and a trainer for small business owners who absolutely hate promoting their business. And what I do is I offer online workshops and private virtual consults to show them how to get more publicity and sales. And I try to make every single step of that process feel like a complete guilty pleasure. Because if it doesn't okay. feel pleasurable, then it's not going to work out. And if your listeners want to know a little bit more about my street cred, which you were kind of talking about <laughs> a little, uh, I do have over 10 10 years experience as a PR strategist, and I've led tons of campaigns for anywhere from multi-million dollar companies down to startups here in the US, Canada, UK, Japan, France, basically all over the world. As you mentioned, my husband is a dog trainer himself. He works with the Michael Ellis School, which a lot of your listeners are probably familiar with. And I've also had a lot of experience working in other pet industry businesses like apparel, holistic treats, things like that. And of course, my husband by proxy ends up getting quite a bit of press himself because I have the relationship. So he's been on the Today Show and Disney Channel and Smart Money Magazine and all kinds of crazy places dishing out dog advice. So So I'm definitely going to be sharing those awesome tips with your listeners today on how they can do the same. Well, awesome. I'm excited. PR was how I got my start with my business when we had no money, uh, when we were first starting out, and PR was what kind of uh, started our acceleration process. Now, I'm pretty sure that what you're going to share with me today is going to make me feel like an idiot because I'm sure what we did was nowhere near on the level of what you're going to share. Now, when we're trying to go out there and get PR, whether that's printed, radio, you know, television, whatever the case might be, we mm-hmm. need an image. And so how do we do that? How do we do that as small business owners? So it's really important for everyone to know that the media cares more about what you know 
than what you do. So that's really the the fundamental key to all of this. What happens is that we're often inclined as business owners to pitch our business to the press, right? Let's say veterinarian business, or we're an awesome dog trainer, but really that's not anything that's newsworthy to the press. So it's, it's more of an advertisement, right? So we have to find a way to find this, our business. One of the best ways that you can do that is really look beyond just your business model and the way that you serve customers and think about how you can deliver tremendous value for their audience. And the best way to do that is to become expert source for them and provide tips on dog ownership, dog training, dog health, you know, whatever your area of expertise is that their audience can put into practice right away. My husband, for example, is a trainer, and he once provided tips for the company that owns QuickBooks, which is called Intuit. And what he did for them, he provided tips on how business owners, what they needed to do before bringing their dogs into their office. So how to get your dogs to behave when you bring them to work. So think about those kinds of things. But that's essentially the fundamental piece here is you reach out to the press or have any conversation with the press. You always want to lead with what you know and not with what you do. So think about what types of tips, value, you know, little tips and tricks that you can provide to their audience. And that's a very media friendly way or very amazing way that you can really get in with producers, journalists, etc. Because they are always looking for people to interview and to be able to glean expertise from to round out their stories. Let me uh, expand or ask you to expand a little bit on that topic. You say they're always looking for people to interview. And so here I am. I'm a dog trainer. I'm a pet sitter. I'm a veterinarian. I know a lot of people think, well, there's nothing that special about what we do. And so I do want to talk about story ideas here in a second. But can you talk a little bit more about the mindset of the producer or the editor or someone who's trying to get content for their publication? Absolutely. So, um, of course, any publication. So if a newspaper comes out daily, radio shows are typically produced daily, local television is produced daily, magazines are a little less frequent, and um, anything online usually has a lot of content that they need to fill up for their audience. So what they're really looking for is a fresh new perspective that they can share with their audience. If you really pay attention to the press, so let's say you read a magazine in May of 2012, and then you read the same magazine in May of 2013, you would notice that they're covering a lot of the same stories. So the stories themselves never change. And that's because that's what audiences are asking for. They do a lot of kind of back end work to find out what the audiences want to know. So there's never a shortage of need for the audience to want to know how to get their dogs to behave, how to get them to, you know, not jump on the counter or how not to pull on the walk, right? And all these things that that people are always in constant need of that information. So they know that they need to deliver that information to the audience. All they're looking for is a fresh new perspective or kind of a fresh new person that can go on air or kind of appear in their pages or be on live on the radio, let's say, or maybe guest blog or something like that to be able to deliver their advice and tips. And as long as you can encapsulate what you talk about in a really audience-friendly way, so a way that would be applicable to kind of someone that has no dog training experience, right? If you can water it down for that person and make them understand what your tips and tricks are, then you'll be golden in the media's eyes. Okay. So do you think it would be fair to say that these producers are are just anxiously awaiting for someone like a dog trainer or like a veterinarian or like a dog groomer to bring them, you know, a story in a box that says, hey, I've got this expertise. Not that I'm a dog trainer, but I can give you this expertise. Are they just waiting for people to come, you know, drop off story ideas or how to, you know, tell me a little bit more about their mindset. Absolutely. So especially in a local market, which I assume that a lot of your listeners are probably local market, you know, if they're dog trainers, pet sitters, etc, veterinarians. So in a local market, it's actually pretty tough to find people that are reliable and ready to speak to the media on a regular basis. So if you're willing to open your schedule in a way, right, and what I mean by opening your schedule is, you know, if a newspaper journalist calls you and they need to put a story together for the 
the next day and you can jump on the phone with them for 15 minutes and give them some tips, then that's perfect, right? So they're looking for reliable experts, people that have, you know, good, fresh perspectives, like I already mentioned. And um, they're always looking for great story ideas that are timely, which we could talk about in more in depth if you'd like, and things that are applicable to a more mass general audience. So if you're talking local media, you have to realize that that's reaching anyone from like a 30 year old stay at home mom all the way up to like a 65 year retiree. So your topics need to be applicable to that massive kind of audience rather than let's just say like a niche audience, like men in their forties or something like that, because that's not going to appeal to their audience. So if you can have come up with some mass topics, be available and position yourself as an expert that can deliver really juicy advice to their audience, then they'll love you. Okay. Well, let's start shifting in that direction then, because it's our job as a small business owner to actually approach them with an idea. How do we do that? I mean, uh, like I say, I've I've spoken with a lot of dog trainers about this, a lot of pet sitters, uh, groomers. You know, they think what we're doing is cool. You know, it's interesting. It helps people, but I don't see it on the news. And so how do people develop these hot button story ideas? Well, again, just to kind of dial back to what I said earlier as well, it's always more about what you know than what you do. So what you do in and of itself is probably not going to be interesting to the media, even if it's interesting to you, right? You need to think it's cool. Um, so always think about topics that surround your business. So the first way, I'll give you two different ways that I think your audience will find most helpful. So the first way would be to explore what your most popular content is is or the most popular topics that you're asked about by your clients. So by content, I mean, if you blog, if you have like a radio show like you do, Ty, or in any other way, you're delivering advice to your audience that you can track and see what's most popular. That's a good indication that the press is going to want that topic too. So let's say you write like 20 blog posts for the whole year. And one of them that was on, you know, how not to get your dog to counter surf, let's say that's like the one that stands out. It got like 30 comments and all your other content is really just kind of like, it's a little bit of reads here and there, but not much. That's a good indication that that's a hot button topic. So I would really pay attention to those hot button topics, really just pay attention to what your customers are asking. So what topics are they asking about all the time and kind of keep a running list of those popular topics, because it's very likely that those same topics are going to resonate with the press as well. And then the second way that you can come up with some really interesting media pitch ideas is to pay attention to what's going on in the world, what's timely. So you can look at things like holidays, special dates, seasons, things like that, because these are the things that the press is always talking about year over year. It's never going to stop. So an example might be for the upcoming December holidays. You probably know that Every single media outlet in the world is going to cover the holidays in some way, shape or form, right? So they have all kinds of things on great gifts and, you know, cooking great meals and things like that. So you could spark a lot of interesting ideas by just thinking seasonally where you are thinking about what special events and holidays. So an example for the December holidays might be a dog trainer might pitch an idea on how to keep your dog safe around holiday decorations. That would be an awesome. Um, TV segment or radio segment. Or how about even like something a little more general, like holiday tips for a happy pooch. So that could be things like when your guests come over, how to get your pup to behave and maybe not bark at your guests or have to be like locked in a room away from the company, things like that. So think through to what's coming up, what's going on in the world. I like to put together a calendar. So what you can do is kind of print it out or do it electronically. Look ahead, look at all the holidays, the months, the seasons, things like that, and think about how that applies to your business. And that will help you to really set out a plan of coming up with interesting ideas to pitch to the press. Excellent. You know, in fact, just as an aside, that was the first way that we ever got press or that I ever got press, mm-hmm. you know, when I was just a one man band. I think it was April and April, if I'm remembering correctly, is National Prevention of Cruelty to Animals Month or something along mm-hmm. those lines. 
And so there's a radio station that I listened to that I knew they were dog lovers, and I called them up and I said, hey, did you know that April is this month? And and uh, they said no. And I said, well, you know, I'm a dog trainer. We, you know, we should really talk about some things we can do for this. And so it could have been anything. It could have been National Love Your Dog Month, and I would have called them with something. But yeah, it just so happened it struck a chord with them, and and that led to two or three years of weekly guest spots on that radio show, and that was huge for my business. So. Anyways, just as an aside and, and kind of a, a heck yes to what you just said, I totally agree awesome. that uh, <laughs> the, uh, being timely is awesome. I want to take a quick break. When we come back, I want to pick your brain and figure out, all right, we got our idea, we got our brand, we got our image, now what? So stay with us. We're going to be right back with Melissa Casera. Sit. Stay. We'll be right back after a short pause. The new Dyson Animal Vacs are powerful bagless upright vacuums for homes with pets. Air muscle and radio root cyclone technology generates the strongest suction power to powerfully remove dust, dirt, and pet hair from the home or car. To order your Dyson Animal Vac, go to DysonDeals.com. DysonDeals.com to order your Dyson Animal Vac today. Dyson, music to your ears. I'm not much of a reader, but I do wish I were more well-read. There are so many great books coming out. I wish I could find a way to keep up. Audible.com makes it easy to stay well-informed and catch up on your reading simply by listening. Audiobooks from Audible turn downtime into uptime. You'll be more productive and become well-read. Now I'm able to catch up on all the great books I've been wanting to read. With Audible, I feel smarter. Pet Life Radio listeners, try Audible.com now and get your first 30 days of Audible Listener Gold Membership plan free. And get a free audiobook. Choose from over 100,000 titles. To get this great deal, go to AudibleDeals.com. That's AudibleDeals.com. Coast to coast and around the world, it's All Behave with Arden Moore. Find out why cats and dogs do the things they do and get the latest buzz from wagging tongues and tails in Rin Tin Tinseltown. From famous pet experts and best-selling authors to television and movie stars, you'll get great tail-wagging pet tips and have a fur-flying fun time. All Behave with America's pet edutainer, Arden Moore. Every week on demand, only on PetLifeRadio.com. Let's talk pets. Let's talk pets. On Pet Life Radio. Pet Life Radio. PetLifeRadio.com. Okay, we're back and we're with Melissa Casera, who's a PR rock star who teaches small business how to get PR for their business. And so in our last segment, we were talking about how to develop a story idea, how to develop an expert image. Now I want to figure out, Melissa, what do we do? So how do we contact the media if we don't know anybody in the media, if we don't have any connections? What's the story here? So this is probably the biggest question that I get (laughs) from every business owner. The good thing is that getting in touch with the press is much easier than you think. I've went over earlier, journalists really are waiting to hear from you because they're always looking for cool story ideas and for local people that can serve as guest experts and deliver a lot of value to their audience. So actually making the connections is pretty simple. What you want to look for, it's going to depend on the outlet that you're pitching. So for magazines, each magazine lists all of the contacts in what's called the masthead. So that would be in the front of the magazine. So as you're flipping through, you'll see like a page that's black and white. It's got a bunch of different names on it. So that's where you want to go. Newspapers. I would say most of the time or the best way is just to Google them, go to their site, and on their contact page, they typically have all of the contact information Mm -hmm. there. And TV and radio, just call the station. I know you just mentioned that yourself, Ty. That's what you did for radio. So that really is the best way. Just call into the station. You can find their number online and ask them who the appropriate contact would be. You have a story idea for them and you want to send it over. So can they provide you with the appropriate contact? Typically, they'll ask either patch you through to the producer or occasionally they'll just give you an email address and say, Hey, you know, we prefer to receive it this way. So either way is fine. And then what you want to do is just make sure that you have your pitch ready for them. 
And as far as the pitch goes, you know, it really should be a paragraph or shorter, about a sentence or two. So, hi, my name is, and this is what I do, right? So, for me, it would be, hi, my name is Melissa Casser. I'm a PR rock star that helps businesses promote themselves with pleasure, right? Mm -hmm. My little 30-second pitch. So, you would have something similar. And then what you want to do is just say, hey, I have a story idea for you that I think would be perfect given this reason. So, you would tell them what your story idea is. So, if mine was, you know, I have the story idea. I'd love to teach your audience on how to be around holiday decorations. I thought it would be perfect because you're doing quite a number of segments for the upcoming December holidays, and this would be a great way to fit in, right? So super simple. And then you just say, you know, are you interested in that for your, would you like to book this segment? Whatever. Would you like to interview me on this? So really, 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 really simple, short, get to the point. um, And that's truly the best way to get in touch with them. It probably sounds very simplistic, especially because I think reaching out to the media seems really complicated, but it's actually a lot more simple as long as you can just keep your pitch concise and compelling and just reach out to them directly and tell them why it's a good fit. Nice. Okay. Now, I think you hit the nail on the head earlier when you said that most of our listeners are probably looking for local media. For maybe a a few listeners that we might have looking for more national media, do you follow a similar outline or is there a different script or is there a different process for getting a bigger media set? Yeah, so it's pretty much the same for national media. You just have to realize that when you're pitching, you are competing with a lot of other people that are also pitching nationally. Local media is a lot simpler because, believe it or not, there you may have a lot of local competition, but there aren't a lot of local people that do press regularly. So there's a lot of opportunity to crack in. Nationally, there's like best-selling authors and all kinds of people that you're competing with. That doesn't mean that you shouldn't go after it, though. The formula would basically stay the same. You want to keep your pitch short and compelling. What I would say, though, is the best way to reach national press is via email. So while you can call into them to get the appropriate contact, they will likely just give you an email address and you'll be communicating with them that way. So that's very, you know, industry standard to do that. If um, your listeners aren't familiar, it's called Hero. The website is helpareporter.com. So helpareporter.com. It's a free service. You can sign up and essentially they will send you an email that has a listing of all these journalists that are looking for expert sources and people to interview on a variety of topics. Not every single email is going to ask for dog, you know, any kind of pet industry topic. So you do have to weed through a bit. But I will say when it comes to getting national press, that's an excellent service to crack in because then you're not really chasing the media. Instead, you are looking for when they need expertise such as yours, and then you're responding accordingly. So that's a good way to do that. Quick tip for your audience. When it comes to connecting with national press, most of them are using social media, specifically Twitter. And a lot of them also place content online. So while it may be like something in print or broadcast, a lot of content is also being placed or kind of regurgitated online as well. So what I would do is make sure that you're very active online. So whomever you're trying to contact follow them on Twitter, you know, retweet their stuff. If they ask a question, you can respond to it, you know, things like that. Send content online and they have the capability for you to post comments. Make sure that you're doing that, not for the purpose of promoting your business or pitching them there, but for the purpose of building a relationship with them. So if you have something really thoughtful and intelligent, you can say in a comment that makes sense with that story, then you can go ahead and, you know, comment there. And they do pay attention to those things. That's one thing that I hear quite a bit from national press is that they're always surprised at how little research people do before they pitch them. So a good rule of thumb is if there's a magazine, let's say that you want to pitch, make sure you're reading the magazine regularly. You've connected with the appropriate contact on Twitter. You know, if they're posting stuff as well, that you're commenting there or at least reading it and paying attention. So research really, really does go a long way with getting national press. These are great tips, and I really hope people are taking notes here because, like I say, there's several things that I realize, oh, I did that wrong, oh, I did that wrong, and several things that I've noticed that that I haven't done correctly. And so for someone who's done press or is looking to get press, these are some great tips. Last line of questioning here. Let's say we're, uh, this is one thing I found as well, and so I want to ask you about it. Throughout my career, we've been uh, lucky enough to get a bunch of press, some print, 
some magazine, newspaper, a uh, handful of television, bunch of radio. Some of it led to money and some of it led to no money. And so do you have any tips for making sure that, okay, if we get media coverage, that it actually is a valuable investment of our time? Yes, absolutely. (laughs) This is probably the most important thing I can talk about. I would say I agree with you, Ty, that most business owners get so incredibly excited to be featured somewhere in the press. And then when they don't get any calls or any business from it, and in many cases, or rather most cases, you probably will not, then it feels like a complete failure. So what I want everyone to do is just reframe their mindset around this. Realize that press coverage does not guarantee a sale. There are a lot of things that happen after that piece of press coverage comes out that can either mess up a sale or not bring people directly to you. There's all kinds of things, whether it's, you know, they came to your website and your website was down or whether they called in and they couldn't get in touch with you, or it's just simply this is the first time they've ever heard of you, right? So the likelihood of them coming in contact with your brand once and then immediately wanting to buy from you, it's not something that happens, right? It's not a behavior that typically happens with consumers. So what you want to do is look at your press coverage as something different. So instead of looking at it as, hey, this is going to guarantee a sale right away, instead, look at it as the ultimate endorsement for your business. This is something that gives you a huge amount of credibility, right? Because we're not talking about a customer that's saying, oh, your business is amazing, which that's important too, to have customer testimonials. But it's even better to have a well-known and even nationally recognized or locally recognized media outlet talking about your business or using you as an expert. So that's really what you want from this. This is your goal, is to get as many endorsements from the media you can then leverage into your business. So as far as leveraging goes, make sure that every single piece of press coverage you're getting, you are sharing it with your audience because the likelihood that they've seen it is very low. Even if it's local and you think everyone reads that magazine, right? Or everybody reads the newspaper, probably not so. Maybe 10% of your clientele or 10% of your audience has even seen it. So make sure that you're sharing it on your website, you know, put up a press page that has links to all of your press coverage. Make sure that you are communicating with your audience in some way, whether that's a newsletter or a blog or both, and that you're sharing it through those mediums. And if you have social media accounts, if you're using Facebook, Twitter, whatever you're using, Pinterest, you know, any of those accounts, make sure you're sharing it there as well. You can't share it enough. So every single time you get a piece of press, be sure that you're sharing it. Now, the second piece of leveraging that's even more important and I love using this and all of my clients use this well, is using it as a follow-up strategy. So I'm assuming that most of our listeners today have a business where you get prospects contacting you through email or phone or in person, interested in working with you in some way, and then they fall off the face of the earth, right? You never hear back from them. And there comes a time when you say, okay, how many times can I follow up with somebody, right? Or what am I supposed to say when I follow up with them? So press coverage is your excuse. It's an excellent excuse to follow up with all of those people that were on the fence. So it might look like something like this. Let's say you had somebody that contacted you for training and you gave them all your packages, pricing, etc. And it just never came through, right? But you know that they're a good ideal client for you. So at that point, let's say I just got a feature on local television, and I was talking about those tips for how not to get your dog to eat Christmas decorations, right? So I might contact that person back and say, hey, you know, it's Melissa, just checking back in to see how everything's going with you and your pup. Just also wanted to let you know, I was recently on NBC talking about this topic. I know you mentioned that your dog was kind of eating things around the house, you know, consuming things it shouldn't. And I thought some of the tips I delivered in this interview might be very relevant to you. Here's a link to the segment. If you want to reopen the conversation to work about working together, I'd love to chat with you. Please give me a call. Or if you're on the phone with them, of course, you would just, you know, reopen the conversation right then. So it's an excellent way to follow up with them. And it comes across wonderful because you're actually delivering them content because whatever that press placement was, there was some element of content in it because you were giving advice and tips to the audience. So you're actually giving them 
an incredible amount of value, right? Because you're giving them free content in that follow-up. And it also has that added sparkle of, ooh, I was considering working with Melissa. And now that I know she was on NBC, NBC thinks she rocks. So, you know, that probably is a good indication that she's the dog trainer I should be hiring. Because if NBC likes her, you know, come on, that's somebody that I recognize. I watch my news all the time or whatever. So it gives you that awesome, awesome endorsement. So that's what I would suggest for everyone listening today is to use that press as a follow-up strategy. That's the best, best way. My clients that are small business owners that are solopreneurs by themselves use it all the way up to my clients that are multi-million dollar businesses with huge sales forces. They use it the same exact way. So it works for any size and scale of business. Beautiful. That's a great idea. I really like that. Thank you. Well, if uh, we've got uh, listeners out there who are curious about how to learn more about this, how can they get in touch with you? How can they find your articles, find your speaking gigs, you know, find the things that you're doing? Sure. So uh, you can visit my website. It's www.caseracommunications.com. So it's C-A-S-S-E-R-A communications.com. What I would suggest everyone does first is to sign up for my free 40 page ebook. That has a ton of actionable tips and tricks that you can use right away, not only just to get press, but to land more customers for your business. So I would say do that first. It's totally free. And then I have a huge archive of blog posts and other types of really juicy the information that you can use for your business as well on my site. There's a little start here page. You can go there or you can just kind of poke around in my blog archive as well. And there'll be more than enough that'll keep you quite busy for, for several days, just kind of going through all that content. And all of it is very actionable. So you can use it right away. Gotcha. Well, this is amazing information. Thank you so much for being on the show today, Melissa. I'm really excited for our listeners to hear this episode. I think they can get a ton of actionable ideas out of it. So thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you for having me. For our listeners, if you'd like to listen to any of our other shows, just click Six Figure Dog Business on PetLifeRadio.com. Thanks so much for listening today, and we'll talk to you soon. Let's Talk Pets, every week on demand, only on PetLifeRadio.com.